This has to be the most powerful PC we've ever had our hands on. It is a custom gaming PC from mwave.com.au. It contains a Galaxy GeForce RTX 4090 SG graphics card paired with an Intel Core i9, 13900K and 32 gigs of RAM all within the Cooler Master half 700 Evo case. MWave have been around for 15 plus years selling a wide range of products with 0% certain charges on credit card. You can check out more M-Wave custom PCs or Galax graphics cards using the links in the video description. The Galax GeForce RTX 4090 SG is a 102mm triple fan design with a new fan blade design for better cooling performance. The back of the card also can accommodate their included 102mm ARGB fan for extra cooling. It simply clips into the back. The graphics card also comes with an ARGB GPU support stick to prevent GPU you say. Now I am a little worried about the mirror panel blocking the front intake fans so let's go ahead and test the thermals of the Galax GeForce RTX 4090 SG graphics card. Fermark is one of those benchmarks which absolutely hounds the GPU. It'll get it all the way up to 100% and it's not really realistic as to what will happen in these games, but this is a worst case scenario. And we are hitting a flat line of 68 degrees Celsius maximum temperature on the GPU. Now that comes with a power draw of 450 watts on the GPU and we've been running this stress test for around 20 minutes. This is also further backed up with our GPU-Z test results with a maximum temperature of 68.9 degrees and a maximum power load draw of 457 watts. The CPU is the Intel Core i9-13900K. It is a 24-core beast with 32 threads. This CPU is both fantastic when it comes to gaming and productivity with max frequencies of up to 5.8 gigahertz. So let's test the thermals with the Cooler Master ML360L V2 ARGB all-in-one liquid CPU cooler. That one's a bit of a tongue twister. Cinebench R23 is designed to really stress the CPU. Again, this benchmark is not going to be realistic as to what you can expect in games, but it is a worst case scenario. Now, what we're experiencing here is a bit of a frequency drop because we are reaching peak temperatures on a lot of cores. We are seeing around 4.9 to 5.1 gigahertz on this particular CPU, whereas my other 13900K actually throttled down to about 5.2 gigahertz. So at around five gigahertz, we are seeing two cores hit 100 degrees, and we're also seeing high 90s on a lot of others and low 90s to high 80s on the rest. Power draw seems to be sitting around that 250 watt mark. The GeForce RTX 4090 can play games at the highest resolution with ultra high FPS and lowest latencies. It is up to two times faster than the RTX 3090 Ti in today's games and apps. It is also up to four times faster in next generation games. GeForce RTX 40 series is both for gamers and creators. Firstly, we have Nvidia's new DLSS 3, which uses AI to multiply performance. It works by adding optical multi-frame generation, which actually generates entirely new frames. This incredible technology helps DLSS 3 to increase graphics performance by up to four times compared to normal rendering with DLSS switched off. With over 35 popular games and application announcing support already, we can expect more to jump on board very soon. RTX 40 series still has the benefits of ray tracing. Full ray tracing is now possible in even the most graphically demanding games, giving you incredibly lifelike worlds and graphics. Full ray tracing means that all of the lighting is ray traced, instead of just some um, effects like shadows, reflections, and global illumination. Cyberpunk 2077 is getting full ray tracing in a new ray tracing overdrive mode, and the update is coming soon. Portal with RTX gets full ray tracing with free DLC, which is also coming soon. Regardless of whether a game has ray tracing effects or full ray tracing, it's now hyper fast thanks to the new RT cores and three 
technologies, shader execution, reordering, opacity micro mapping, and displaced micro meshes. Streams are now higher quality and video exports are faster with the new AV1 encoding. AV1 encoding is 40% more efficient than H.264. So now you'll be able to stream or watch streams at 1440p quality while using basically the same bandwidth as the previous 1080p streams. The dual and video encoders can also cut rendering times in half for up to two times faster video exports. OBS, YouTube, Discord, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro, and many more are working towards updates for AV1. Beyond the AV1 benefits already discussed, the upgraded ray tracing cores plus DLSS3 also benefit creators with speed ups for 3D rendering and enabling real time visualizations. I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on what the new RTX 40 series cards bring. Are you guys happy with the performance games from DLSS3? Will you guys be using full ray tracing? Let us know down in the the comments. I have to say I'm fairly impressed with the performance of this machine. I think the only negatives I could come up with is that the mirror is blocking the intake creating a negative pressure inside the case. However, the GPU thermals were still really good. The CPU had thermal throttling which was a bit of a shame because we didn't get to see its full potential in productivity. However, gaming temperatures were fantastic and kept the CPU operating at 5.5 gigahertz. Now if you would like to check out more, I'll leave the links in the video description. <laughs>